Hi friends, my name is Michelle Renee, but you guys all know me as Giggles, and this is part three of my character diary as Little Red Riding Hood from Into the Woods. I've finally been let back outside and my friends flocked to me. Gretel, Hansel, Alice, and even Goldilocks all asked if I was alright. It's so strange. I don't know if I've changed, or if they have, but they all seem... different somehow as if they were many years younger than me. But only for a moment, because then I think about what things they must have gone through, and we're all alike again. They all asked where my red cape was. I told them Granny is making another. Mother and I checked on Granny today. She's very well, and she's finished making my new cape. After the baker saved us, I gave him my red hood, since earlier he had seemed to want it badly. What he needed for, I can't imagine, but it was the least I could do. My new cape is made from the wolf. Granny taught me how to skin the beast. But now that I have this new cape, am I no longer Little Red Riding Hood? I like how I am called, but, but what will become of that? Have I outgrown it? I wanted to play with Alice today, but she was too busy playing with her new friend, Dorothy. From what I heard, Dorothy is just as imaginative as Alice. She too has an imaginary world where the witches travel by broom or bubble, and a simple click of the heels could bring you back home in the blink of an eye. I prefer Wonderland to Dorothy's Oz, because at least there are cakes in the world that Alice made up. I was passing by on the way to Gretel's when I bumped into a girl sewing nettles. I apologized to her and she nodded. I asked her why she was sewing nettles, but she did not answer me. Whatever the reason, it must be very important because she stayed focused to her task. I didn't know what she was going through or why, but I wanted to do something for her, so I gave her one of my sweets, bid her a good day, and continued on my way to Gretel's. I went back to the place where the ugly duck had once been, but what is there now is no duck, but a beautiful swan. I hope the little duckling found its family, and I hope that swan was not unkind to it. Goldilocks and I had a surprising friendship bloom today. She said after hearing about my incident with the wolf she, that she felt terrible and picked some berries for me. At that moment, she said that she'd had a similar experience with three bears, which were not sweet at all. Poor Goldilocks, I had but one wolf to worry about, but she had been alone against a family of bears. I confess that I ate some of the porridge. <laughs> we both laughed and ate berries together. I visited Granny again today, and I was very careful to stay on the path. I was almost tempted, though. I heard someone singing, a girl, in the distance. It sounded almost as if it were coming from above, from a tall castle or such. It sounded like singing, and then weeping. Hm. Today I met a boy who claimed he'd climbed a beanstalk to steal a golden egg-bearing hen from giants. <laughs> Boys are so silly. I dared him to prove it, so we'll see. Aside from that, I saw a traveler come into town and begin to cook soup with nothing but water and a single stone. I thought he was utterly mad, until other people started giving him more ingredients and it started to smell really good. I couldn't believe what had come from this stone soup. It tasted so yummy, and the traveler was so kind to share it with everyone. Keeping silent must be something mature ladies do these days. I saw this girl making her way to the castle. She walked sort of awkwardly, as if she were a fish out of water. People asked if she was alright, but she kept silent like the maiden with the nettle. So it must be a trend of sorts. Or maybe she saw something very frightening. Or she's keeping a secret. Or perhaps all of that. The bakers have had a baby! Well, it isn't born yet, but the baker's wife is getting very close. Just outside, I saw the witchy woman turn away two maidens. At least I think it was the witchy woman. She wore the same hood and carried the same staff and held the same glare, but her voice sounded much younger. Perhaps she has a niece? Anyway, the two maidens themselves were very strange. I could have sworn I'd seen one cough up a diamond and the other vomit a toad. There have been two royal weddings recently. The first, the elder prince charming to a very kind-looking girl. 
What fun it must be to be older and married and to know other married people. I wonder how those foxes are doing. And Joringle and her husband. I heard a story of a princess named after a spring flower who ran off with an ambassador. It's been quite the talk of the town. I still haven't heard from the beanstalk boy, so I doubt he's telling the truth. Speaking of silly boys, I'd met one while running errands that claimed he had a cloth that could turn ordinary metals into pure silver. I asked him to show me, but he said his magical cloth had fallen into the fire. <laughs> I didn't believe him. He said he'd get another, but I never saw him again. Boys are so fickle! Mother let Gretel, Alice, and Goldilocks stay for the night. We ate lots of bread and cheese and berries and compared the strangest stories we've ever heard. Goldilocks told us about the bears. She didn't understand. Gretel told us of the maiden she'd seen in the woods who seemed to be floating in the air and would only land to swim. I told them about the maiden who spit out a diamond. As usual, Alice won. This morning, we saw the slightest hint of frost. Alice told us it snows because a woman in a world below our own shakes the down from her bed, which falls into our world and becomes snowfall. I don't think Alice is capable of stopping her imagination from running. She said she'd gone back to her wonderland by jumping through a looking glass of all things. Please, somebody stop Alice! Mother tells me I must eat more good food in order to grow strong. But every time I visit the bakers, the wife always gives me free sweets. Every time I'm sent to the fisherman and his wife, they always bicker and never give me any free fish. I walked past the shoemaker's shop today. In the window were the most beautiful red shoes. The miller's daughter has not been seen for some time. The miller himself only says he's made a huge mistake. Keeps asking for forgiveness to the air. I hope something dreadful didn't happen. Mother says my uncle has been missing. So many people go missing, it seems. Yes, she said he went on a trip and was to come back with gifts for his three daughters. For the elder two, clothing and jewels. For his youngest daughter, however, a simple rose. I hope he has not run into a beast as I did. Nice woman, the wife of a king from a faraway land, came into town today and told stories to me and the other children. She must have a thousand or so. She said it was important to pass down stories, as you will never know who will benefit from it to become a better person. I offered my story, the one with the wolf, for her to take and tell, but she told me that I must be the one to tell it. I met a beggar woman today and felt bad for her, so I gave her one of the sweets the bakers gave me. And then she told me some things she'd done. She said she'd once told a queen to eat a flower and warned her not to eat two, and the queen ate two. She had also given a childless widow a barley corn seed, claiming it would result in a child just as eating the flower would for the queen. I no longer like flowers. They always seem to be getting people into trouble. Now the bakers have had their baby. Lately, I've been thinking. I survived the wolf attack. But the boy who had come long before me didn't. I suppose there's something to learn from this, from him and I. It's a strange feeling I, I can't quite explain. I feel a sense of responsibility and a lot of guilt. A girl that Gretel and I used to know has just been declared a princess, all because she felt a pee beneath her as she slept. Alice thought the news was very strange. It must be difficult to suddenly have to grow up and have the responsibilities of a princess. I saw a small chick helping its mother hen gather a meal. Some of the other animals crowded to partake in the feast, but the hen shooed them away. I think it's because none of them helped, except her chick. I think I've discovered something within me that has needed to come out. I no longer have my red hood, but I do have a bit more knowledge. And perhaps the reason I have survived while the boy who cried wolf has not is so I could go on to tell both stories, to warn people, to help them. I think Mother and Granny would be very proud of me for that. I've been so selfish and naive, but it's time to grow up. Nothing bad can happen from now on. Not now that I'm wise. Who knows? I might be a good mother one day. And that was my character diary as Little Red Riding Hood. 
spoiler alert in case you're trying to figure out why I ended it there so just pause the video have a nice day but for those of you who I guess are curious why I decided to end it there was that ends kind of right before act two starts where things start falling apart and granny and the mother die so I wanted to end it right there kind of just at the cusp of her transitioning from a girl into a woman <laughs> So, yeah, thank you guys so much for um, hearing out my character diary for Little Red Riding Hood, and I hope that you guys have a fantastic day. Bye!